was just saying it's great to have Mary Ann um, uh, have this opportunity to have a talk with Mary Ann this afternoon just to give us a wee bit of insight into uh, Red Squirrel activity uh, and things to look out for when we're out and about walking within the National Park. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Mary Ann, who is the Conservation Officer, um, and you'll be able to give us a wee bit more detail on your official title and your role. Um, but yeah, I'll hand over to Mary Ann just now, and thank you very much. Brilliant, thanks Fran. Um, so as Fran said, I'm Mary Ann. I'm the Local Conservation Officer for Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. Um, and it's far too long a title and there's even extra onto that as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you so you'll have a nice presentation rather than just watching me. Um, and that should take over most of your screen. Just give me a little while to get it sorted. Hopefully it will all work perfectly. There we go. So hopefully you can all see that. It's a nice big screen. So as Fran said, my name's Marianne and I'm the local conservation officer. Um, and originally we were going to try and do walks with everyone during this week, but obviously um, with the restrictions in place, we decided to make it a Zoom online session for everybody. So first of all, a little bit about red squirrels. So their scientific name is Sacorus vulgaris, and they're part of a special squirrel group, um, which is called Sacuridae, and that means shadow tailed, as you can imagine with their nice puffy, um, bushy tails. They're also classified as rodents, so similar to mice and rats, and that's because they have four teeth that continue to grow at the very front of their mouth, which means they have to eat lots of really hard things to keep wearing them down. As their name suggests, they're red in colour, although they do have a really large variation in their colour of their fur, and you can see it even just from the two pictures here. So this top right is very typical of kind of the spring and summertime. They're more orangey red than um, kind of a brownie red, such as in the bottom left there. You'll also notice they don't have any ear tufts in the summer quite often, whereas this guy here has got some fantastic ones. I've done a lot of school um, visits over the past couple of years, and a lot of the school kids refer to this top right one as an iron brew colour squirrel because it is orangey in colour, and I've kind of stolen that from them. Because they do have such a big colour variation, we do have to be quite careful because actually um, red and grey squirrels that we find in the UK can be um, red, grey, black, white, all sorts of different colours. Um, and these are some red squirrels that actually have the grey coloration. We can still tell that they're red squirrels from a couple of identifying features. On these two in particular, you can see their red arms. They also have some ear tufts and they've got a slightly different face shape as well, but I'll go into more detail about that a bit later on in the talk. So red squirrels are found in quite a lot of places across the globe. They're throughout Europe, Scandinavia, right across Russia, and of course in the UK and Ireland. Throughout most of the rest of their range, they're actually quite nice, healthy, really good populations. It's actually only in the UK that they're threatened. They used to be a common species all across Britain. Unfortunately, there's now thought to be about 160,000 left in the whole of the UK. And we're quite lucky here in Scotland because we have three quarters of Britain's population of red squirrels. So looking at these kind of cartoon maps, um, you can see in 1952, in this depiction there's reds all over the UK and each of these little flags represent areas where red squirrels are without any grey squirrels having to share those resources. We move to more present day so 2012 which is a fairly similar situation now and there's only one little red squirrel flag up in the top here and this is the only area that has been untouched and doesn't have to share with grey squirrels. The rest of the country has to share and we now see a lot of little pockets as opposed to red squirrels across the whole of the UK. So what's happened? So populations are affected by a couple of different things. They're affected by severe winters. At this time of year, the youngsters are kicked out of where they were born. They have to go and find their own territory. They also have to hide loads of food away for over winter to survive through to the springtime. They also have to maintain their homes, their little nests and drays up in the tree, and they need to be able to do this quite well. If it's a mild winter, they're not too bad off. Um, if they make a few mistakes, it's not too much of a problem. However, if it's a really severe cold winter, then that can cause some issues and they have an even higher mortality rates. So there's less the next spring. Unfortunately, we've also been moving um, things around in the landscape quite a lot. We've been clearing woodland for development, for agricultural reasons over many, many years. It's thought that squirrels used to be able to go from one side of Scotland to the other by trees alone without touching the ground. 
as you can imagine, that's not as possible anymore. But we are putting lots of things in place to make sure uh, woodland's more connected and we're saving um, more woodland than we used to. Unfortunately, we also put roads and things in the way too, and they're not very good at crossing the roads. So occasionally they are hit by cars, especially youngsters at this time of year. Thankfully, it doesn't tend to have too much of an impact on the general population, but it can um, cause a little bit of a drop in local populations. Because everyone really likes feeding wildlife in their garden, which is fantastic, we're also putting those um, squirrels in closer um, proximity to our pets, so our dogs and cats, and I have heard quite a few stories of both dogs and cats managing to get red squirrels, particularly kittens when they're not quite aware of all the dangers. All of these things have quite a limited effect on the red squirrel population. It does affect it a little bit locally, um, but it doesn't account for the whole story of why there aren't as many red squirrels as there used to be not that long ago. Unfortunately, grey squirrels are the main problem at the moment. So the grey squirrel is from America originally, and there's two reasons that it affects the red squirrel, through competition and disease. They were introduced in the 19th century by Victorians, mainly because they didn't have a way of showing anybody all these new interesting species that they found. They moved a lot of um, different species around the world. And one of these was the grey squirrels. They brought them back to show people and also brought them back as gifts because they were new and exciting and very different from our red squirrels. Unfortunately, they outcompete for food and habitat and they just take over. They're a bit too good at being squirrels and, and they're also not as fussy as a red squirrel. They're naturally found at much higher densities. They also eat a lot more because they're twice the size. They have a much higher reproductive rate and they can produce all year round. They're not restricted in any way, whereas red squirrels are a little bit restricted and they're very reliant on what food's available in the autumn and then how well they can reproduce the following year. Grey squirrels would take over anyway, just because they're bigger, bolder, there's more of them. Um, but unfortunately, they've also been helped by a disease that they carry, which they are unaffected by, but it is lethal to red squirrels. And partly for all of these reasons, it's actually illegal to release a grey squirrel in the UK, even if you've accidentally caught it. I touched on squirrel pox and the disease, and it is one of the major threats that are affecting red squirrels. Thankfully, um, it's not a serious situation in Scotland as it is in England. Um, but there are some problems. So it starts with small lesions around the eyes and it's a little bit like myxomatosis in rabbits. It causes blindness, sores, and they get really disorientated. They can't really move around very much. They get really malnourished. They die really quickly within about two weeks of infection. And because they don't move around very much, it's not the reds that are moving it between different places. It's the gray squirrels acting as this reservoir to keep it spreading. I'm gonna quickly go off that because they're not the nicest pictures in the world. So our project is Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. It's a partnership project led by the Scottish Wildlife Trust, also supported by Nature Scotland, which was uh, Scottish Natural Heritage until a couple of weeks ago, Scottish Forestry, which was Forestry Commission until last year, and Scottish Land and Estates, Red Squirrel Survival Trust and RSPB Scotland. We have five years of funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund up until March 2022. And in this region in particular, I'm supported by the Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park. So a little bit of a background about the project before I go into um, looking for squirrels. We're the first nationally coordinated attempt to protect red squirrels in the UK. Not to say nothing was happening in Scotland before this, but it was lots of independent groups and it was good to get everybody together to have a concerted effort. The main aim is to try and stop the decline of um, Scotland's core red squirrel populations. As we have 75% of the UK's population, it's really important for us to keep hold of those populations. We're aiming to work really closely with local communities and trying to generally improve conditions for red squirrels across Scotland and try and stop the grey squirrels moving any further. So nationwide the project can be split into three main areas and that's partly because of the pressures that grey squirrels bring to those areas and to the reds in that area. So with any maps from now on, um, red, squirrel, red is red squirrels, blue is grey squirrels and purple is red and grey together so where they overlap. Up here you can see an isolated population of grey squirrels that are sharing the area with red squirrels in Aberdeen. And the main aim here is to have complete um, eradication of grey squirrels. Along this central area here with the green as Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park. The main aim is to try and reduce the amount of grey squirrels in this area and try and push them further south below this highland boundary fault line. We're also keeping an eye on the grey squirrel populations in this blue patch here to find out where squirrel pox is within the country as it is coming up from England from the south of Scotland. 
And then in the south of Scotland, where it's very similar to Wales and England, we're looking at um, a lot of overlap between the two species. So we've identified some priority areas of red squirrel conservation, as highlighted here. There's a couple more now as well. And we're focusing on these areas. We've got really good populations of red squirrels and they've got really good habitat for them. So we're focusing on those and then trying to remove as many grey squirrels from these areas as possible. So there's less contact with the reds and therefore less likelihood of squirrel pox passing onto the red populations. So within this area, we do a couple of different things as a project. We look to see where squirrels are, we need to know what's happening and where the do populations are. We then do grey squirrel control and we also do squirrel pox virus testing. Now, none of this would be possible without finding out where squirrels are to begin with. So we have to keep track of where they are. One of the things that we do is we put up feeder boxes such as this one that this little red squirrel is using now, with camera traps as well, just to keep an eye on what's going on. As you see, the squirrel reaches in to get that food. And what we do is we put a little sticky tab on the underside of the lid and that catches red squirrel hairs or gray squirrel hairs. And with that, we don't have to be there to see who's visiting. Those hairs, when looked at under a microscope, can tell us which species has been there, which really helps us to understand what's going on if people aren't in the woodland as well, because sometimes squirrels can be quite shy. To be able to install these feeder boxes, we need to know if there's squirrel activity around anyway. So we look at feeding signs and we also rely on people reporting their sightings. So you can look for some signs of squirrels. Quite often um, we can go into a woodland, we know that there's squirrels there but we might not actually see them. They can be quite fast and almost a bit of a blur like this one here. They can also be really hard to see. We can look for signs such as their nests or their drays really high up in the tree where you look for big bundles of twigs all together. Normally if they've got leaves on it, it's squirrel. Quite often um, you'll see big bundles that are crows and other corvids as well. They don't tend to keep the leaves on. They don't need to be quite as camouflaged, although it's a bit trickier in the areas that we're working because quite often squirrels use holes in trees so you don't get this big bundle of twigs on the outside. But it's worth keeping a look up in the treetops for their nests. We also look for signs that they've been feeding. So we look for footprints on the ground to see where they've been, little kind of almost handprints you can see around and look to see any signs of nibble cones. This is particularly important at this time of year as all the trees are starting to drop all their food. So we know that squirrels tend to be up in the canopy for the most part, but this time of year they start coming onto the ground once the cones have fallen on or they can knock them down as well. There's a couple of telltale signs that we can look for whilst we're out and about just on the forest floor rather than looking to see if squirrels are around. And that's to see whether pine cones and um, nuts have been squirreled as it were. So we can look for signs of kind of ratty tatty bits as in this bottom left picture and they almost leave behind kind of an apple core looking stem in the middle of the pine cone. If it's all really rough then it's likely a squirrel that's been um, nibbling at it. If it's really nice and neat like this one on the right hand side and the bottom right that tends to be a mouse because they've got much smaller teeth and can nibble right in whereas the messier ones next to them would be a squirrel. Unfortunately we can't tell if it's a red or a grey squirrel and that's why we then put the boxes up or go and do um, some walking surveys to have a look and see what we can see. Squirrels will also quite often use really high positions, so um, tree stumps are really good, especially if they're all nicely covered in moss because it can um, kind of hide any signs that they leave behind. And so any big tree stumps, it's worthwhile having a look around to see if there's any nibbled cones or even um, hazelnut shells and things that have been cracked in half. Again, if it's cracked in half, then it tends to be a squirrel. If it's tiny little holes that are nibbled in it, that tends to be a mouse. They don't just eat nuts and seeds though, even though they're really good to look at at this time of the year, they eat quite a lot of other things. Um, so they'll have mushrooms and actually one of the interesting things about this is that they can leave them to dry um, resting up in tree branches um, so that they can then store them over winter. So if you happen to see a mushroom that looks like it's in a bit of a weird place hanging from a tree, it's likely that a squirrel's put it there. So maybe have a look and see if you can see some other signs. They'll also eat berries, um, birds eggs if they come across them, insects, quite often by accident, flowers and then new buds. And that's because there's lots of different things available at different times of the year. So nuts and seeds are available from now right the way in through January, but that's mainly because they start burying them kind of September, October, November, and then they'll have these as a little store for over winter. Uh, other times of the year, so from April to June, you can see that there's no nuts and seeds available really. So they have to rely on other things. So um, flowers, new buds, shoots, and quite often they'll eat bark and saps off trees. And again, insects, um, whatever they can get really, they're quite um, diverse in the amount of things that they eat. 
So we do our um, annual surveys with feeder boxes and a couple of others outside of this. But one of the things we really rely on is people to report their sightings. So on our website, scottishsquirrels.org.uk, we have a map um, which anyone can have a look at. Each of these red dots is where people have reported red squirrel sightings, that could be one or many, and all the grey ones are where people have reported grey squirrel sightings. And this really helps us to understand what's going on on an um, everyday basis. So I referenced this map earlier and we've got this hash line down the middle that we know there's an overlap and we're trying to reduce the amount of greys in that area and push them further south. And this is the equivalent place that we've currently got at the moment. Um, so we know we're working in the right place and we know that's where the overlap is. Um, as Fran mentioned before, there's a couple of different sites that walk in the park um, walk in and they're all depicted here. And as you can tell from this, all of them are really good areas to be able to see red squirrels. So that's a really great start. Some are better than others. Uh, so Aberfoyle, for instance, has so many red dots around it. Um, Balak has just started getting red squirrels, a um, couple of extra red dots in there. So any of these places are really good for being able to see red squirrels and to keep an eye out for their signs too. So I've mentioned that um, we really need to look at the ground rather than just up in the trees and looking for all these kind of nibbled bits and pieces. Also for those mushrooms hanging up in the trees. We can keep an eye out for their nests or their drays that tend to be quite high up. Um, it's better to try and see them at this time of year as the leaves start falling off the trees because otherwise they're quite camouflaged right at the very top of trees. The best time um, to have a look and see squirrels running about is early morning or just before dusk in the evening. They don't tend to be um, out in the middle of the day unless there's a food source that we're providing for them. They tend to be a little bit more covert than that. And um, at this time of year, they're also on the ground a lot more as they collect all those nuts and seeds and then they bury them as well, like this little guy's doing here. We also want to know about grey squirrels though, so please keep an eye out and let us know if you see them. Um, we'd appreciate your sightings of those too. As you can see, there's a lot less places um, that reds and greys overlap in the National Park. It's not in all of the walk in the park areas. The key locations are around Calendar, where they're starting to move up from Stirling. Um, Drummond, we're getting the occasional sighting at the moment as they're starting to move up from Morgai and Glasgow. Um, Balak, we've still got a few, and there's the occasional sighting around Arica. Um, so there's lots of things you can keep an eye out for. I mentioned before that it can be quite difficult to tell the two species apart because reds can look grey and greys can look red. Um, they also change their um, coats and their fur twice a year. Um, so if you've got red squirrels visiting your garden, for instance, it could be the same one coming back all the time, even if they do have a slight colour change, particularly um, in the spring or in the autumn, is, which is when they change their fur. They also might have some bold patches occasionally as their new fur starts to come in. And that's partly because they just have to change the density of their fur and you wouldn't want to wear a big thick winter jacket in the summertime and they don't want to do that either. Um, but it does mean they can also molt their ear tufts, which is why they don't have them in the summertime. Um, so there can be some slight changes in their colour, so that's just something to watch out for. Some identifying features um, to tell the difference between red and grey, while they might seem um, pretty clear cut at the moment, there can be quite a big variation in colour, as I've mentioned before, and if you just quickly see a glimpse of a squirrel running past, you don't necessarily know which it is. Um, a couple of things to look out for, they've both got white tummies. Um, the red squirrels do tend to be red, they might have a bit of variation. Um, quite a few at the moment have really black tails. They will have ear tufts, particularly at this time of year, um, but they may not have them over the summer. They tend to look a bit more agile and a bit more athletic. They're about the same size of a can of soup, Compared to the grey squirrels, which are twice the size um, when they're adult, at this time of year there are a couple of youngsters running around and they can look a similar size to the red squirrel. Um, but grey squirrels tend to look a bit bulkier, they're almost like the bodybuilders of the squirrel world in the UK. Um, twice the size, they never have any ear tufts, so they always have mouse kind of ears. They do tend to be grey, although occasionally they'll have a red tinge. Um, but one other key characteristic is they always have kind of a white halo around their tail, so that's a really good indication that that's a grey squirrel no matter what the rest of their coloration is. So that's all my kind of hints and tips and um, I've just left quite a bit of time so that I can answer any questions. Um, I don't know if any have come through on the chat yet. I'm just going to leave this up for a second because there's some of our details and um, my email address. Um, all of these details can be found on the scottishsquirrels.org.uk website, um, so it's worth having a look at that. Um, please report um, as many sightings as possible. 
as I mentioned, if you've got them coming to your garden every day, um, please don't feel like you have to report them every time, just every so often. Um, during this red squirrel week would be fantastic because we're doing the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey, trying to get a snapshot of where um, both red and grey squirrels are across the country. Um, but also if you see any differences over time across the year, that would be great. Uh, just report the maximum number you see at one point in time. Thank you very much.